Hi everyone, I wanted to do, uh, do a little um, segment here I'm going to call Encounter Builder and for this uh, segment I'm going to uh, go back and take a look at um, uh, a book we had to read for homework when I was on the Cigar DMs show probably about six weeks ago at the time of this recording. We were supposed to uh, read the book book one in the ace paperback series and also discuss the 1982 uh conan movie conan the barbarian the first one and um so i kind of had the idea what one of the first story in the ace paperback was uh was called the thing in the crypt and before all you howard purists go off i mean i, I realize that i know it's not a uh actual howard story it's a uh, uh, El Sprague de Camp and uh, Link Carter story, but anyways, I thought the little short story was fun and it it played out just like a D and D encounter. So, um, the gist of the story was it's uh Conan, young Conan. He's about sixteen years of age, and uh, by this time he's been tested on the field of battle. Um, he's warded off some invaders into his homeland, and then he went back and then he got bored, he got kind of a little stir crazy, and then he ventured out and went out and was doing some raids with some other guys, some other um, Hyborians, and then, uh, yeah, but they messed up and they got caught. And he got caught as well, but he wasn't caught for long because, well, he's Conan, so he broke himself out and was on the run, and then um, he's in a desolate land, and it's kind of, uh, everything's kind of sparse and snow-covered and that. He's running, and there's... Wolves have taken notice of him, and since food and everything's in short supply, the wolves are chasing him down. And all he's got on him to defend himself is a, what's described as about a four-foot piece of chain that he broke to break himself free. So, yeah, I went and uh, I built a little uh, pseudo-barbarian I'm going to call Bronan, and I built him using 5e because, well, eh... Uh, 5e, your player characters kind of start out super powered a little bit as opposed to the other, some of the other systems like old uh, advanced D&D &D or BX D&D &D or um, OSE for that matter. And uh, also the other thing was I had a little bit, I had a few more tools readily available so I thought I wanted to get this done and get this out. So I built out a Barbarian using D&D uh, &D 5e and D, D beyond and let me click that so let's take a look here's my he's human male um strength 17 dexterity 15 constitution 2 intelligence 9 wisdom 13 and a charisma at 11 and i built this using the standard array and i set him at standard array for the uh for the stats and then um, I also, uh, um, yeah, standard array for the stats. And I, oh, I set them at, I set them at level four. And instead of feats, um, instead of a feat, I just use the uh, ability bonus modifier instead of just for simplicity's sake. So I added that, the uh, ability modifiers for him being level four in the places I thought appropriate. So... Yeah, I've got a pretty strong barbarian here, and yeah, he's on the run from a pack of wolves. So let's take a look at Bronan on the run from a pack of wolves. So when he, while he's on the run, the story goes is that he's being chased down by a pack of wolves. And then three wolves... Three wolves... Um. approach and they engage him in combat and so let's uh let's roll initiative here first for Bronan let's see what he gets okay I did pretty bad on my initiative roll so let's put that in here
Okay, now let's see how the wolves do on their initiative scroll. Alright, the wolves get a 16, so they will go first. Alright. So the wolves approach Conan and get into melee range of him. And yeah, they're going to attack with the bite attack. So let's do all three rolls. Okay, so... The, um, out of the three, one is going to hit for 10 points of piercing damage. So, therefore, Bronan is going to have to make his, he is going to have to make his strength uh, save, DC 11. Otherwise, he's not prone. Oh, not good. He failed. Okay. I should have moved these guys up so they were in melee of him, but do that now. Okay, so now that Bronan is not prone, that means he's going to have to spend his um, spend his movement to have spend half his movement to stand back up. And actually, since he was not prone by the first one, I made a mistake here. He should have also been hit with this last wolf because he would have been biting at advantage. So he would have hit Bronan for an additional four points of piercing damage. And Bronan has an AC of 14. Alright, now Bronan is going to go into a rage. And now being into now being in a rage, he has strength advantage on strength deck checks and saving throws. And he uh, melee damage, plus, and he gets plus two to melee damage, and with strength weapons, resistance to bludgeoning, and he cannot cast or concentrate on spells while raging. So let's see what happens here. So he is going to attack with his little four feet piece of chain. So I gave it a I gave that a, a D four um for the for the damage die. So let's see what happens here when he attacks a wolf with his chain. Let me see if he Okay, so that will hit, we'll say he's going to go after this wolf with a green marker on it. So, That will do six points of slashing damage on him. All right. Or I guess it would be bludgeoning more than slashing, so we'll say bludgeoning. Okay, so that's Bronan's turn. So now we're back to the wolves. 
Wolf one, bite attack. Oh man, doesn't Ronan's not faring too well? I don't know that he's gonna make it out of this very first encounter. Okay, so let's see here. All three of these are gonna hit. Ronan is now down another fifteen minus twenty-two. Okay. And he is knocked prone once again. All right. Pronan's turn. Spent half his movement. Stand back up. Let's see. He's down to five hit points. Uh, I don't know if he's going to make it through this encounter. So, that being said, let's see what he, how he does on fares on his attack here. Twenty five to hit, which would be a critical. All right, and since it was a critical, he will get to do seven points of slashing. So he will have killed this wolf here. All right, back to the wolves. Let's see how this plays out for Bronan. He is in a kind of in a bad way. All right, wolves attack again. Bite attack. <laughs> well. It didn't do, uh, Bronan did not do well at all. So Bronan did not make it through the encounter. All right, but for argument's sake, let's say he would have made it through said encounter. Um, he would have, in the, in the story, he dispatched of these three wolves and then started, he was on the run again. And... Um, so yeah, in the story, he's on the run again, and then the wolves catch up to him then again a little bit later on. So let's, let's try this scene again, but let's try, so he is in a situation with the alpha wolf, and let me do this. And the alpha wolf of the pack now is addressed and running up to him. I made the alpha wolf a dire wolf, and based on what we had in the other encounter, I don't know that he's going to stand a chance. But we'll say Bronian made it through the first encounter unscathed, or we'll say maybe he took a little bit of damage, but was able to sneak in a short rest, and he's back to full hit points here. So let's... uh. Let's roll for um let's roll for a dire wolf. Uh for the initiative score and then we'll roll for Bronian. So let's initiative. Alright. The wolf got seven. Yeah, let's see how Bronan does here. Uh, 
No, quite a bit better this time. So Ronan got a 17. All right. So Ronan meets the wolf, attacking the wolf with. He's in a rage once again, so he is going to attack and get his advantage on strength checks and saving throws and... He'll be resistant to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage, and he won't once again won't be able to cast any spells. Not that he has any spells, anyways. So let's see how he does here with his improvised weapon. And a six is not going to cut it. So let's see how. Let's have the dire wolf make the roll. Dire Wolf with a bite attack. And he is going to miss with a 10. Okay, so we're back to Bronan. Attacking with his chain once again. A 13. Still not enough. So, missed... Missed that time as well. Alright, let's see how the dire wolf fares this time. Oh, okay. So Dire Wolf was going to hit him with a roll of 20, and he will take 11 points of piercing damage. But we once again we have to remember that we have to remember that since he's in a rage, the damage is halved. So in D and D, you typically round down, so it's, it'll be a minus five. Okay, now we're back to Bronan. Bronan missed again. All right, Dire Wolf. Bite attack. Another miss. Okay, back to Bronan once again. Let's see what happens this time. That time, Bronan will hit. And he will hit for five points of bludgeoning versus the dire wolf. Alright, dire wolf attacks. Bite attack. And he will miss. And by this time in the story, after after several after several attacks against each other in the story, they kind of um, fell through the ice, and <clears throat> each each retreated. the The wolf went back to his pack, and then Conan was Bronan was back on the run again, and he was on the run again until he came to a cliff face. And then when he got to said cliff face, he was being Thought that this might be his last stand, and he puts himself up against the wall, but he noticed something 
different about the wall. And then as the wolves are closing in, he kind of jumps through an area of the wall. It kind of, he sees a gap in it and it resembles a door. And he jumps through the gap and he kind of almost jumps through like a secret type passage. But the wolves, the wolves do not pursue and follow him in. They're on the outside pacing about something's keeping the wolves at bay. And I wonder what could it be. So. So Bronan is in some type of tomb or crypt and it's um he finds some debris on the floor and things and whatnot and he finds some uh pieces of flint or some type of rock and he's able to create a spark and then some of the loose uh dry debris and leaves and whatnot he's able to get a bit of a fire going in here and he he illuminates the room and he sees this <clears throat> he sees a figure a uh, great figure on a throne and the figure comes has a sword and he's kind of all intrigued by the sword and he comes and he takes he's going to take said sword for himself and after he does that he starts to hear a creaking sound and from come from behind him and this um corpse like figure that was on the tomb has now come to life and Bronan is now in combat with a mummified creature. And what I did for this encounter was um, I kind of nerfed the mummy a little bit. And I, instead of having rotting fist attacks, I just gave him two. I gave him multi-attack, two claw attacks, and I took away the <clears throat> dreadful glare. So let's see how Bronan fares here against this skeletal mummy slash warrior. All right, so we'll roll initiative for Bronan. Alright, I'll give Bronan an 11, and let's do our Skeletal Warrior. Alright, like I said, he has multi-attack. And he has two claw attacks. And okay. All right, so claw attack one is going to miss, but claw attack two will hit for 11 points of damage versus Bronian. Okay, so Bronian is back up. But now he has the benefit of having a sword. 
and it is a great sword. Equip the great sword for him. Sixteen and a sixteen will hit. Ten slashing. All right. Skeletal Warrior two attacks again. Uh, the eighteen will hit and it'll hit Bronan for another ten points. So Bronan might not fare too well in this battle either, it looks like. But we'll see. <clears throat> All right, now Bronan's attack again. Hmm, not good. All right, Skeletal Warrior, two claw attacks. Ten and ten, both those miss, so good for Bronan. <clears throat> so, Bronan now is going to attack with his sword once again. Miss for Bronan. Back to the Skeletal Warrior. Two claw attacks. Twelve and a ten. Those miss again. Bronan one more time. Let's see if he does it this time. Okay. Sixteen will hit. For nine slashing. Okay. <clears throat> so in a story after Bronan gets a finally gets a real good whack on him, he severs one of the arms of off the uh the mummy. And they go round and round a few more times and the the arm that he severed actually comes to life and starts grabs on the Bronan's leg. So now we have a also, I have a severed arm or a crawling arm into the uh, equation here. So now, let's um, the mummy's turn will be up, but he has lost his multi-attack since he only has one arm now. So let's see. 17 will hit. Bronan's going to take 11 points. Uh, he might not make it through this battle, but we'll see. The claw, so it's a, I just used the the crawling crop claw from D and D Beyond, and just seemed to suit the uh, scenario here. Let's see if the claw is going to do anything to him. And the claw misses. Okay, so let's go back to Bronan once again. 
Ronan is going to uh, the claw is just grabbing hold at his leg but doesn't really seem to be doing any damage to him he's worried about this mummy so he is going to try to slash the mummy one more time All right, misses. Mummy's going to attack with the claw. 18 for 11. So in my scenario, Bronan would have went down. Okay, so in the story, what happens if Bronan would have survived our scenario here? I guess I didn't make my uh, monster weak enough. Um... He kind of finally gets himself positioned and he realizes that his blows are rather ineffective. So he kind of works it and he's kind of gets in the position and he is going to <clears throat> try to kick the uh, mummy into the fire thinking that'll do the trick. So let's, let's just play it out and see if we eventually get a... Uh, a shove attack. So in 5e, a shove or a attack like that would be uh, contested by the monster's athletics. So let's do a let's do an attack from Bronan. Sixteen will hit. Okay, so now our mummy can make the save. And he's got a choice. He can either go strength or deck. So being a mummy, they're not too dexterous. So let's see if he he's going to go with strength. And actually he makes it. Okay, so let's say they just go round and round and do the dance one more time. Bronian. Eighteen that time. Let's see how the mummy fares this time. That's not enough. So Bronan is able to kick the mummy into the fire. And he starts flailing around a bit. But eventually catches fire and um... Perishes in the fire, but Bronan kind of still hears and feels something in his presence, and he he decides he's had enough of this place, and he's going to go out back outside and take take chances now that he's armed with the sword against the wolves. But by this time and in the story, the wolves have kind of dissipated and split. So, um, uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, in 5e, I thought for sure this would have played out a bit differently, but I did have some bad rolls in that. But, uh, yeah, I don't think in 5e, so maybe this this would have been suited for better for the actual Conan, Modiphius Conan game. But, like I said, I tried it out in 5e and tried it with a Barbarian, but the Barbarian on his own just, just wasn't enough to... Uh, get the job done here and I even set the barbarian at a level four which I thought for sure would have worked but uh some of my roles weren't in my favor and just yeah the enemies are too too tough so this kind of goes to show that D D is really meant to be a cooperative game. You have to have a bunch you have to have a group of several other players all playing off your strengths and weaknesses and yeah so the encounter of Iran, Bronan did not fare too well, but thankfully in the story, Conan prevailed and succeeded and went on to have many more adventures. So um, thanks for bearing with me and partaking in this little experiment. Uh, I'm going to try to do another one. I think I'm going to try to do a, set the blob in a fantasy world and do a, do a scene from the movie The Blob and see how the... Hero and Nat fares, hopefully fares 
fares better than we did with our little uh, Conan uh, mock-up pastiche here. So uh, thanks for joining, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.